What's up? My name is Evan Turner, and if you're watching this video, you're probably curious about Express LRS. ELRS is obviously a very powerful communication system between drones and an uncrewed system of some kind, but it's confusing. It's hard to find all the information. There's different firmware, there's Lewis scripts, there's all these things, there's different receivers. Oh my goodness. That's what I'm gonna try and help you with. The idea behind this video is it's gonna be simplistic, it's gonna to be to the point, and it's not gonna be super duper in depth, which means somebody in the comments is gonna say, oh, well you forgot this receiver, or you forgot this very specific niche use case, or, or something like that, and that's okay. But the idea behind this video is to get 95% of users in the air, or connected, and cutting out all the crap, basically. That's the idea. So I apologize if I miss out on your specific use case or your specific hardware or your specific firmware version, but for people in 3.0 or higher, which I'll talk about more in a little bit, this should get you connected every single time. It's not gonna be the only way, it's gonna be the way that I know works. And being that I run a store that builds drones for a living, I've seen a lot of Express LRS, I've seen a lot of good things, a lot of bad things, but at the very least, I've made it work every single time, or my team has made it work every single time, and we're gonna try and share that knowledge with you today, so hopefully you can get in the air with Express LRS, whether it's on one of our bind and flies, or on one of your drones that you built or bought from somewhere else. At the end of the day, we get this question so much, and we're gonna make this video to help you all out today. First, we have to talk conceptually. Most remote control people are used to a transmitter and a receiver. You click bind on, on, on something, click bind on something else, and they connect. Well, that's not how this works. At a very, very high level, you have a transmitter and you have a receiver. You're gonna put a password on your transmitter, also known as a bind phrase, which you'll hear many more times in this video, and you're gonna have a password on a receiver. If a receiver and a transmitter are within range and they have the same password, they will connect. So today, at a very high level, we're going to put a password on a transmitter and a password on a receiver, and we're gonna do it in a way that works 99% of the time, every single time. Obviously there's some nuances and some troubleshooting and I'm also gonna try and give you some input into how to troubleshoot things when that does happen. But for the most part, we're gonna be trying to put a password on our transmitter, a password on our drone, remembering the password on our transmitter, and then for the rest of time, we should be able to put that same password on all of our drones and they should connect to our transmitter every single time and you're in business. That's the whole point. It's not gonna be perfect, but we're gonna try our best. Let's go inside and talk about the transmitter side first. Okay, so I have a TX16S here with a Radio Master Ranger module on the back, which is an Express LRS module. First thing you're gonna think is, well, I don't have that remote. I don't have that module. And that's okay. Conceptually, this is all gonna be the same. If you're running Edge TX, which most modern controllers are, and you're using Express LRS, which if you're watching this video, you are, then this should be very much the same. Obviously, my controller has a colored screen and if yours doesn't, it's still gonna be the same. Just bear with me, we're gonna talk conceptually and I promise you that for 95% of users, this will apply to your use case. The module I'm using has a display on the back which I can use and do all these things, but most don't, so we're gonna go through the Lua script. If you don't know what a Lua script is, don't worry, I don't really either, but I know when I press these buttons, it works. Um, I do also know that if you press these same buttons the way that I do and it doesn't show up, that means you probably need to update Edge TX or put on this Lua script and that's where it gets hairy and complicated. Most modern radios come with the proper firmware on there. If it doesn't, I'm gonna try and link a video here or put it in the description so you can learn how to do that. But this video is not for that. Now, this is just the home screen. I'm in my model that I use for all my drones. And the first thing we're gonna do is click system. This goes for any Radio Master controller. There's a model on one side, system on the other, buttons over here, buttons over here. But you're gonna click system, and you're gonna see Crossfire Configure. These are all the Luas I have loaded. You see here it says Lua. But you're gonna go down to where it says Express LRS. And this goes for the pocket, the boxer, everything. So I'm gonna scroll down, Express LRS, and it see it detects my Radio Master Ranger up top. And we have all these things that you don't have to know what they mean. We are going to be looking for Wi-Fi connectivity. Wi-Fi connectivity, click into Wi-Fi connectivity, and then enable Wi-Fi. Not RX Wi-Fi, not backpack Wi-Fi, not VRX Wi-Fi, enable Wi-Fi. It's going to run, and then we're gonna to go to our computer and look for the Wi-Fi signal that this controller is emitting. Important note, you don't need your drone on, you don't need your drone within a million miles of you, you just need your controller, and that's it. 
Now that I've pressed that button and my transmitter is emitting Wi-Fi, we're gonna go up to the Wi-Fi of either your phone, your Mac, your PC, anything, and you should see a Wi-Fi network called Express LRS TX. TX stands for transmitter, RX stands for receiver. Being this, that this is our transmitter, we're looking for Express LRS TX. We'll click on that. Your computer or phone or whatever is going to then try and connect to this network and you should have a menu that pops up, hopefully soon, it looks just like this. If it prompts you with a password, the password is Express LRS all lowercase. I'm gonna put that on the screen now. My uh, devices have only ever prompted me once. I got a new laptop, I had to put the password in once, and then after that I didn't have to anymore. I'm then going to scroll down to binding phrase, and this is the only thing we're gonna touch. There's gonna be these Wi-Fi intervals, these TLM report intervals, UART inverted, all that stuff. I've never, ever in the history of my life touched any of that on the transmitter, and I've been just fine. We're gonna go in and put in our binding phrase. For the sake of this video, I'm going to put in YouTube 123. So, a couple things that matter here. Capitalizations matter, spaces matter, characters obviously matter. Um, so you'll see I typed in YouTube 123, capital Y, no other capitalizations, 123, no spaces, and it's going to put in these numbers here at the bottom. So 250, 79, 201, whatever. Um, that's very important. And this is a, maybe even take a screenshot of this so you remember the numbers. Then come down to save, don't worry about anything else. I know it's a lot, the buttons to press. Don't get nervous. Click save, then very important, click save and reboot. Then after that, your screen on your controller should change. It just changed, voila. And now your ELRS module, whether that's internal or external or whatever it be, has the bind phrase on it in theory. We can then test this by putting the bind phrase on our receiver, which we're gonna do now, and then we can go from there and troubleshooting. I always recommend doing your controller first. If you don't know your bind phrase, make a bind phrase. And this is very, very, very important. Never share your bind phrase. It could be a security or safety hazard. If somebody else has their bind phrase, in theory, they could then connect to any of your drones and fly, and that could be cool in some cases, but you don't really wanna be sharing it around because then somebody could accidentally connect to your drone or maybe intentionally connect to your drone and that could just be unsafe, right? So keep your bind phrase to yourself, YouTube one, two, three. Hopefully nobody steals that one. I wouldn't recommend it, but just a note there. We're going on to the receiver now. The first thing I'm gonna do before connecting to any receiver is turn off my transmitter. Since my transmitter is obviously transmitting on 2.4 or 900, whichever you're using, at least on 2.4, it seems to interact with the Wi-Fi signal that the receiver is emitting or trying to connect to, and it causes problems. So whenever putting the bind phrase on your drone, um, always make sure your transmitter and any other 2.4 gigahertz transmitters are turned off. It seems to make the process a lot more reliable. We are going to be doing two different receivers today. Conceptually, they're gonna be the same, but I did wanna show um, the LEDs being different on two. Both of the receivers we're using today are Happy Model receivers, an EP1 and an EP1 Dual, but conceptually, they should all be the same. Just the lights may look a little bit different. We're gonna start with the EP1 that just has a solid green light, and then we'll do the EP1 Dual that has Happy Model's multicolored lights, and go from there. The drone we're gonna be doing this on is the Light Switch Ultra Ready to Fly from 533. It comes with an Express LRS receiver tucked in the back here. You'll see it when I plug it in. Very bright and easy to see, so you never have to worry about where your receiver is. So, as you can see, the light very nicely put right here on the corner. Slow green flashing means it's essentially looking for a transmitter that it's already bound to. Of course, my transmitter and all other transmitters in this house are turned off. We're going to wait 60 seconds for it to be in Wi-Fi mode. This goes for just about all Express LRS receivers. I don't care what your light's doing. After 60 seconds, if it's on 3.0 or greater, it's going to change in some way, some fashion. And that's going to mean that it's in Wi-Fi mode and then you'll go right back to your computer screen, go to the Wi-Fi and look for Express LRS RX. So I'm gonna wait 60 seconds. I'm gonna show you what that fast green flashing light is. And we're gonna put the bind phrase on our drone. As you'll see here, the receiver is now flashing very, very fast. This means that when we go to the Wi-Fi on our laptop or computer or phone, that there should be an Express LRS RX network showing up. 
usually takes a second, but there it is, Express LRS RX. This is obviously a very short range Wi-Fi signal, so I recommend that you're close to whatever your device is. It then opens up the exact same Express LRS menu. Um, if the password, if it prompts you for a password, the password is Express LRS all lowercase in, in case you skipped the other part of the video. My bind phrase for this video is YouTube123, capital Y, YouTube123. See that my numbers do match up. I'm not going to change this. I'm not going to change anything else. I'm going to leave it bone stock. Yes, you can. Yes, I'm sure it's very powerful if you go in and know what all these settings do. For the sake of this video, I recommend you not touch anything else. You click save and reboot and then click the red button, reboot, and then you'll see your receiver will flash like this after you've pressed reboot. It's gone from the fast flashing to the slow flashing, meaning that it's gotten the bind phrase on it. And to verify it, I'm gonna verify it with this one first. I may look stupid, and I promise this is not scripted in any way. I'm going to unplug the drone. I always recommend you do that after you put a bind phrase on it. Turn on my transmitter, wait for it to get fully booted up, plug in the drone, and we're gonna be looking for a solid green light to show that they're connected. Here we go. Not gonna stop recording. Unplug. Turn on remote. Okay. Wait for the Express LRS module to turn on. Okay, here we go. We're gonna be looking for this green light to turn solid. Look at that. We have a connected Express LRS receiver. It arms, we're all good. Obviously, you'd have to go in beta flight to make sure your sticks and switches are all set up, which we will not be covering in this video. We're just worried about getting Express LRS bound and configured. That is for the Happy Model EP1 receiver that has a solid green light. We're gonna do this one more time by putting this bind phrase on the EP1 Dual that has a multicolor light, just so you can see it one last time. Once again, first things first, transmitter is turned off while I plug in drone to make sure that the Wi-Fi works. Plugging in the drone. You'll see this receiver has these multicolored lights. It's got this yellow flashing light, meaning that it's looking for a transmitter. It doesn't have one, obviously, because it's turned off and doesn't have one with a... We're gonna wait 60 seconds for this light to change in some capacity. To be 100% honest with you, I don't even know what it's gonna change to, but I know after 60 seconds, it's gonna change to something, and we should have Express LRS Wi-Fi network turned on. Sure enough, 60 seconds later, we now have this green flashing light or multicolored light. We're gonna go to our, our Wi-Fi and look for an Express LRS Wi-Fi network. And after a little bit of time, it, I thought it wasn't gonna work, but after a little bit of time, it did show up, so it's not perfect. It's not gonna work every single time. Sometimes it takes longer than others, but give it time. Express LRS RX showed up. We're gonna wait for the menu to pop up, type in our bind phrase. If it prompts you with a password, it's Express LRS all lowercase. Then going to put in my bind phrase for this video as YouTube, one, two, three. We get those numbers that are matching. We're not gonna touch anything else. We're gonna click save, reboot, watch the receiver lights change. We now have that yellow flashing, meaning that it's done something. The lights changed after we did something on the computer. We're going to unplug the drone, turn back on a transmitter to wait for it to get fully booted, plug back in the drone and see if it connected. Hopefully, I don't look stupid. Booted, plugging in. And sure enough, we have a solid light connectivity here. I'm not sure if I have this switch set up. We're gonna find out. I don't. Woo, I was in turtle mode. Aha, uh -huh. connected and good to go. And if you've been watching Express LRS videos all day or reading and reading and reading all day and haven't figured it out, I hope this video helps. I am now going to dive into some of the settings, very, very, very surface level to give you a little bit of insight about how to get more range or less range or maybe change things here or there. Um, but if you're here just for the binding, I hope you enjoyed this. Try and make more videos like this that uh, 
take care of you guys. Jumping into the settings now, the things we're going to talk about are packet rate and model match. Those are the two, uh, there's Telim ratio and switch mode, which I honestly am not knowledgeable enough to speak on, but I will speak about packet rate and model match. Um, if on some receivers we've had a bug, maybe it's not a bug, but a bug where it'll be bound, it'll say it's connected, but the receiver does this weird flashing thing where it's like flash, 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 and it says it's connected, um, but it's not moving in beta flight or something like that. And we've been able to fix that by going into model match, turning it on, and um, for whatever reason, the receiver just had model match on. So to do that, uh, you're gonna follow the exact same steps as before. Let me see if I can get this to focus. Click system, scroll down to express LRS, click in, and then go down to model match. Sometimes, I'm not gonna say every time, and honestly, rarely, if we turn this on, then it will connect for whatever reason. And I guess you can set different IDs and so forth to the receiver exactly, um, I guess for security reasons. But for the most part, model match is typically off. But if you're having issues, then sometimes that helps. I'm not gonna say that that's perfect advice, but just from my experience, something that's happened. The next thing we're gonna talk about is packet rate. I'm a racer, I race professionally, um, but I also film professionally. So those are two different use cases. For filming, you wanna have the best range and the most reliability. Um, and the latency doesn't matter as much. We're using DJI video uh, most of the time, sometimes, and we, don't, we just need as much range as possible and much reliability as possible. So for doing that, we would use a packet rate um, that's lower, maybe 150 hertz. Um, for those who don't understand, packet rate is essentially telling you what your latency is or the refresh rate of the system. Us racers like to use 500 hertz, sometimes even 1000 hertz, but it has less range because it's trying to refresh so fast. Um, but some freestylers and long rangers will even go down to like 50 hertz to try and go as far as possible because they don't need super low latency, they just need as much range as possible. To change that, you go into your Express LRS Lewis script like I showed you before. It's at the top, as you can see here, D500 is what I typically use. But if I wanted to get some more range, I could scroll down to something like 50 hertz and get way more range. Um, I would say for most casual flyers, 150 hertz would be totally fine. Oh, that's 250. 150 or 250 hertz would be totally fine for most everyday flying. But as you start to become a competitive racer, D500 is very, very popular. And for those who maybe have a diversity receiver or flying in very close range, Something like F1000, which is a thousand hertz, um, is very common as well. Those aren't going to dramatically affect your experience in any way, but it's good to know what you're using. It's good to be knowledgeable about the equipment you're using, whether that's be for hobbies or for work. It's very important to know what you're doing. Be careful. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me uh, from my Instagram or Facebook or however you can get a hold of me. I'm happy to answer these questions. We get them all the time, which is why I'm making this video, but hopefully a bunch of them are answered in this video. Um, I will ask that if you are about to reach out to me, uh, please watch this entire video first. Take the time. I'm happy to help anytime, but I just really appreciate if you watch this entire video to make sure you didn't miss anything because I don't want to tell you the same thing twice, right? Um, thanks so much for watching. Have a great day and I hope that you're out flying right now and have turned this video off by now. But regardless, thanks for watching. Appreciate the support as always. And uh, yeah, see you around. Bye.